I have designed time-lapse mechanisms for sliding, rotating, and multi-frame panoramas. All use the Arduino computer. The major drawback was the lack of USB triggering capability. I decided to design a new platform that would do what all the previous designs did using the Raspberry Pi computer. The Pi runs a version of Linux, so it can control many cameras with the GPhoto 2 software. With the motor hat for the Pi, I can also control the three motors needed for the three axis motion. As with my previous designs, I wanted to make something affordable that many people could build with the tools and materials available to most hobbyists. Since 3D printers have become relatively inexpensive and are also available in schools and libraries, I designed several parts which can be printed on small 3D printers. The platform provides a horizontal sliding track that can be inclined 15 degrees or more. It also provides for rotation of the camera in the vertical and horizontal axes. These motions provide more interesting videos by changing the perspective during the time lapse. I won't go into construction details here since I'll post those details on my website including plans, photos, and STL files for printing parts. I will just cover the highlights of some important design features. I wanted a rail system that was flexible and cheap that could support the weight of the camera and motors. The slider rails are one half inch electrical conduit, five feet long. The length is arbitrary. I purchased two pre-cut five foot pieces at Lowe's for less than $4. To mount the rails, I used four pieces of two and a half inch by eleven and a half inch softwood. I clamped them together in pairs with about an eighth of an inch space between them. I then drilled five eighths inch holes with a Forstner bit two inches deep. This made slots into which the rails could be laid. I used carriage bolts and wing nuts to clamp the rails tightly, making it easy to disassemble for transport or storage. It also allows easy exchange of rail lengths. On each end of the rail structure, a small wood bridge is fastened to the top rail mount. The bridges use a machine screw, washer, and wing nut to clamp the timing belt, making it easy to position the carriage and tension the belt. I wanted the carriage to be easy to put on and remove from the rails, so I designed rollers that would allow me to just place the carriage on the rails. The rollers include small bearings that are pressed in on each side of the roller. The roller axle is a 1024 flathead machine screw. The taper of the flathead keeps the bearing centered, since it doesn't fit the bearing perfectly. I added a tapered washer between the inside bearing and the carriage platform. The taper allows for the axle to be snug without having the bearing rub on the platform. I also wanted the carriage to support all the hardware and power, so the platform is wide enough to mount all motors, the Pi, the battery, and camera. The width is sufficient to be very stable on the rails. A ball head is attached to the platform and provides a quick release and leveling mechanism for the rotation structure and camera support. The camera mount consists of several hardwood arms which allow for vertical and horizontal motion. Hardwood is recommended because this structure supports a fair amount of weight, including the camera and motors. I used some plywood hardwood flooring pieces I had. Solid hardwood would probably be better. The motion is done with DC motors inserted through holes in vertical and horizontal motor support arms and retained with 3D printed motor mounts. The DC motor shafts are offset such that when they are rotated in the motor supports, the shaft position moves further from the driven pulley, making it easy to tighten or loosen the timing belts for adjustment of the arm positions. Tightening the motor mount in position is done with a 3D printed knob and nut fit into the curve slot of the motor mount. All motors use 20-tooth pulleys printed on the 3D printer. 
The driven pulleys for rotation R160 tooth pulleys also printed on the 3D printer. The timing belts for the rotation are 400 millimeter closed loop belts. Movement along the track is done with a long timing belt. The belt is fixed at the ends and runs around a drive pulley and idler pulley. This eliminates any tendency to slip when the track is at an angle. The rotation motors run at 2 RPM. The track motion motor runs at 30 RPM. All motors are rated for 12 volts, but I am using a two-port USB power bank. One port powers the Pi, and the other powers the motor hat. This allows me to use a single battery. While the motors run at reduced speed with only 5 volts, the torque is plenty for the motions needed with this platform. Using two power sources allows me to change to a higher voltage source for the motor hat if I need to do so. The electronic control consists of a Raspberry Pi model B Plus with an Adafruit DC and stepper motor hat and motor reversing switches installed in my design of a housing adapted from a design published by Claymore on Thingiverse. The Pi controls the camera via G402 and Python programming. If you want to go more compact with time lapse, you can just use the platform without the rails. I put a quick release plate on the bottom of the platform so I could mount it on a tripod. You only get two axes, but that will provide good action for your time lapse videos. The arm that tilts the camera is very short and has an ARCA quick release mount attached. This makes it easier to attach the camera. But using an L bracket on the camera also allows for balancing the camera. By rotating the support arm and rotating the quick release, the camera can be positioned so it is in balance. Then, while adjusting the camera angle for a shoot, the camera doesn't jump out of position when your hands are tightening the motor mount. The quick release and L bracket also allow positioning the camera in portrait or landscape mode. Software development was done with Python. Sample programs provided with the motor hat were used as a foundation and then modified as needed. To make programming more convenient, I activated RealVNC server on the Pi and used RealVNC viewer on other computers. This provided an easy interface with a big screen and full keyboard and mouse functions. For initial setup, I used a tiny wireless keyboard with built-in touchpad and a TV with HDMI input. Once I activated the real VNC server, I used my regular computers for programming and monitoring. Programming is fairly easy with the sample programs for the motor hat. The most difficult part was calibrating the rotation angles. I added protractors to the rotation arms to help calibrate. I only wanted to vary the number of frames to shoot and the rotation angles for my clips. Since motors don't instantly run at the speed you set, and they don't instantly stop when power is removed, I had to include program variations to compensate. While the motors get up to speed rapidly, they seem to stop much slower, so my programming adjusts for some of the non-linearity. It isn't perfect, but it is accurate enough for this application. I didn't want to require a connection to my laptop while in the field, so any program can be started automatically when the Pi is started by copying it as autostart.py. This is not a magic name. You just need to tell the operating system what program you want started when the Pi boots. For many video clips, the same program will be used repeatedly. I can vary it some by just reversing one or more of the motors with the reversing switches on the Pi housing. Since this platform also replaces my multi-pan platform, I created a program that allows me to create multi-row panoramas. Here are some samples shot with the three-axis time-lapse platform. 